Hello. All right, and we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans. It's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just three nerdy veterans geeking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies. A place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. The podcast that puts the fun in dysfunction. Mostly that's just Nick, but we love him anyway. Everyone's going to have a dysfunctional vet in the group. I guess I drew the short straw. You are I mean, most of the time that's me, but but that's why we brought you on, so it could not be me this time. And Doc just pretends to look all innocent, but, you know, she's more messed up than all of us. <laughs> all right, so uh, for those of you who are wondering and you didn't read the title of the episode, we're going to talk about uh, what we're reading, what we're watching, all the cool things nerdy. Uh, instead of just doing author interviews, uh, fair warning, Nick's probably only going to be reading books with pictures, but it's okay. Yeah. He's going hey, to see Scott you know Ryan. Somebody's going to start. I got on the show. I'm the comic book aficionado. <laughs> what, what were you saying, Doc? Everybody's got to start somewhere. That's right. Oh, I've learned a lot that. about George Perez this last year, but. Stan well, was our grandpa. George was kind of like the dad of fandom, comic book fandom. So, so before we dive into what we're reading, since you brought it up, what uh, what comics are you working on right now? Ooh. Me right now, currently, uh, yeah. I kind of nothing right now. I'm, I'm waiting on writers. I'm waiting on writers to finish their script. So I got uh, two comics right now in in the writing phase of development. Um, Corvid and Sparrow is going to be done here. It's got, he's got like six pages to write. And Trevor is working on the second issue of Solarium Prime. So. so is six pages a lot to write? It can be. Okay. It can be. Um, Cause I mean, I don't mean to be demeaning or anything. I just don't know. No. Um, the thing is, like, we all of our books are designed to be ongoing, not like a mini series or a draft novel or anything like that. So it doesn't always have a definitive ending. It'll tie up that story arc, and then we'll set up for the next one. So and we got to try and many novels. A lot of a lot of novels do that, and then we also have to see how we're going to tie it into the other titles that are in production. So, so you're working right now on your superhero sort of world. Uh, yeah. I know at one point in time on one of our episodes, you mentioned you were looking at potentially doing some sci-fi and straight fantasy comics. Is that something you're still working on? Yes, um, but there's a lot of things we need to get off the plate first. We want to get the heroes established. Um, cause we've been working on a lot of those for up to five years and they haven't seen the light of day yet. Um, so hopefully they're really, I know they're going to be really good cause we're taking a lot of time to carry on. So. Cool. You know what? So that sounds like a very George R. Martin answer. So every time someone mentions, a, mentions what I'm going to finish the next book, I kill a Stark. <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh what's the the output like well, for those of us who don't know like if you're doing a comic book assuming you go balls to the walls what's the average it takes to make one are you talking about like time yeah like if it does it what six months to write it another month to draw uh, I don't know. I, when i was doing it all by myself for like the first two issues of phantom hawk like 2011 2012 um it was about it was over 200 hours to do everything Wow. Okay. A lot of manpower. Yeah. That's why it works best as a team. So it used to take me a year to put out a book. Now it still takes me a year to put out a book because I'm broke and that shit costs me money. But, but uh, when I, when it was rock and roll, like 2018, 2017, we put out like six titles that year. So here's a question on some of it with, is there the comic version of print on demand? Yeah. Um, if you go to, um, let me see if it's still there. No, Indie Planet has a print on demand option. Um, I'm not sure if Comics Wellspring does, but um, Indie Planet, and I think they renamed it. They used to have a, a print on demand website that was called uh, Indie Monkey. Now, what's the quality of the print on demand for comics? I know there's okay. some quality issues when you do it, like print on demand books from Amazon versus like if you go through Ingram Sparks and get it traditionally put together. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, I they're set up to the same parameters as if I was ordering um, 
ordering a bundle for myself to sell. Okay. So like fulfilling order. So it'll be whatever parameters I put in there, the glossy cover, a matte cover. Uh, yeah, well, we had a, a mom who came into Barnes & Noble when we were there, and she tried to return, when I worked there, she tried to return a graphic novel she bought from Amazon to Barnes & Noble. Doesn't work anyways. Because, but here her problem was like all the ink kept staining her daughter's hands. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's poor quality on the ink. Yeah. Part. So, I mean, I'm not going to accuse Amazon of putting out. Poor, oh, yeah, I will. But I won't. I won't. After good things. Not on air. But I mean, it may have been a. Sell my books, Bezos. Please, please sell the books. All right. Um, yeah. I've also. Yeah, I don't sell books. I'm good. So, I, I've run into the extreme opposite. I think it's um, is it Troll Lord Games that does it. One of the guy we interviewed one of them, who's like so obsessed with quality that he built his own print shop to print his own D and D manuals for his company. That was something I was kicking around for a while. I was taking out a loan. <laughs> He's what you got? I know they're in Arkansas. Way down at like middle of 2018, slowed way down. I wasn't yeah. pumping out any, as many books, but it, we were building up to that point where. Seemed like every month we were putting out a new book. Well, so if you didn't notice, uh, Stabby walked in behind him and she didn't kill him. So no. this is not a good horror movie yet, but uh, we're here to talk about whatever we're reading. And then we'll we'll talk about what nerdy stuff we're watching. So we could we could do a little bit of both. So uh, we'll start with you, Doc. What uh, what nerdiness are you reading right now? What sci-fi or fantasy or anything spec fic? A bit of both. So I just finished Thrall by Jennifer Blackstream. It's in her mystery series um, because I totally got hooked when we interviewed her. And uh, and it's the same series. It's her um, witch detective series. It's so much fun. And then I am, so I just finished that literally last night. And I have started Touched by an Alien. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. We did interview Jenny, Jenny Koch on it. It's a sci-fi novel. So a bit of both. You just ruined uh, Stabby's day. She was getting all excited with that title, and now she's like, mm, "Okay, sci-fi." How fun an alien is well worth it. She she'll love it because Area Fifty One's involved. I already oh. know about that. Right her back yeah. Well, we're all back. <laughs> So what most of you don't know is she actually used to work there, but she escaped and she's in Witsec. So this is not what she I really looks she like. Nick. You can't say Witsec. She's under my care, man. Well, I mean, we're not saying she's from Alpha Centauri, but I'm just saying maybe she's not really covered, it. <laughs> You're not supposed uh, to tell people. Oh, dang it. I broke the rules again. Spoiler. All right. Uh, uh, Nick's going to have to get her a new, new cover and start again. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. We'll move back to Texas. Why are you Anything? telling them? <laughs> so, so uh, you, you came in here to talk with us about books. So what are you reading uh, right now, Stabby? I am reading The Five. Oh. And it's actually the life stories of the women killed by Jack the Ripper. Oh. Ooh, well, so that, history. It's, it's inspired a lot of spec fic, so I think it, it will we'll slide it in, grandfather that. Oh man, I wish I would have known you were reading this. I could have started reading from hell again. That's a great So book. I'm only on like I just started it. It's about Jack the Ripper from Hell. I just I started it and it's about their lives prior to obviously the night that they were um you know taken out of this world. Stabby stabbied. When they were shut in their square <laughs> mortal coil. But it's actually pretty cool because you find out a lot of them um they were going through a lot of hardship before before they ever even started into the life that got them. You know, so do they, they speculate were. on who they thought Jack the Ripper was? I haven't gotten that far yet. So there's supposed to be speculation on a few different people that it could be towards the end, but you have to get through the five stories of the women first. I do know that they was they were hinting at a specific murder castle in Chicago. Oh. I actually know what you're talking about. So for those of us who don't, because what Tamsin Silver, who if you're reading this, you have to read her Untold Legend series. That starts okay. with Billy the Kid, because she, yeah. So you what does that have to do with the murder yeah. castle? I want to know about the murder castle. H.H. H. Holmes. Okay, and okay. his murder castle. 
I got you. He, he was, he Here left he America is. just long enough. Speculation that he may have been Jack the Ripper. Yep. See? Tamsin can listen to this and then go, oh my God, Suska actually pays attention. So they so covered this on. I haven't gotten there yet. We'll see. Right now I'm still like in between the first woman and how it's leading into the second woman and the, that they may know have known each other before that. Okay. So they actually um, did, uh, they covered this topic on one of the Sherlock Holmes episodes when they did the TV where I think it was uh, something Lou was the female actress that played uh, Watson, Wendy Lou. Okay. Uh, and they were talking about, they speculated it was the king in that episode. One of the, one of the royal family in that episode was the speculation. So there's, there's a lot of speculation about who it could be, but um, that one was one of my favorites, as well as H. The, the whole idea of H. H. Holmes being Jack the Ripper, it just kind of fit a little too well for me, um, because the name that he used when he was traveling from America to England the time frame in which Jack the Ripper happened, he was not in America, he was in England. And then shortly after the last murder, he was back in Chicago at the World's Fair. Um, and the killings had stopped in the UK. And they had started back up in America. So um, it, it seems like it could have happened. But okay. so I mean, the realm of possibilities. Yeah. So are you reading anything in the sci-fi fantasy spec fic face of uh, space other than uh, what you're reading with the, the stabby stabbies, which is appropriate given your nickname. Um, I, my trip to Barnes and Noble was all true crime right now. This, this go around was all true crime. So I have, um, another book that is like 18 stories of true crime that was actually solved by family members. And then, um, a fictional book about something similar, but I haven't even started that one yet. She enjoys true crime. I, I kind of had to pick and choose this go around because um, my stepdaughter kind of broke the budget. <laughs> Understood. So I have a feeling that Stabby and I would have way too much fun at a Barnes and Noble. I was just thinking that, that uh, Doc was we probably getting a little too. We need a basket, not a carry one either. <laughs> yeah, Doc was getting a little bit too excited that she was shopping at Barnes and Nobles and not buying them on Amazon. <laughs> she was like smiling all big. But uh, okay, what, there's something what, about the smell of a book. There is, though. I yeah. do love one second. I'm going to share this one. I love my my cover, my ebook cover. Did um, you cool. name your ebook? She did, didn't no. she? She's not going to tell us, but she named it. It's called Nookie. <laughs> I love it. Because it's a Barnes and Noble nook. Yeah, that's right, you dirty pervs. Shut up. I love it. She did it all for the nookie. Yes. <laughs> so how many of them have you burned through before you got to that one? What do you mean? Like, have you worn... This is going to sound... So worn have, out you, have you worn out your nooks? Because you read oh, so Oh, yeah. Much. I've had a nook since 2010 when they first came out. So this is what one a year is that about the pace you burn through the battery and the no i don't burn through the battery they actually are really durable i normally they stop um supporting the os system before i actually break them which i mean that's better than my laptops or my phones fair, so, fair. um it may be because i love it more but i do sleep with it so it's probably not that um so many I, I jokes we are not gonna make so um, leave me alone i'm a single mom all right, Nick, what about you? What are you reading? Uh, I'm a huge Daredevil fan. Picked up this craft novel. Um, actually, it's just a collection of like five or six issues. But it's done by Frank Miller, who's probably one of my uh, my favorite Daredevil artists and authors. Um, for those of you who don't know who Frank Miller is, he, uh, he did Sin City. Uh, I know. I saw the movie. There you go. That's that's Frank Miller right there. So he's got a reputation of having like um, really gritty um, street level heroes or, or just street level characters. So and a lot of it's very noir. 
So okay. if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, Frank Miller's awesome. So uh, in this particular run, um, Karen Page, who was Matt Murdock's former lover, apparently gets addicted to drugs and uh, sells out Daredevil's identity to the Kingpin for a fix. And so the Kingpin is... A fix. Yeah, either that or Matt Murdock wasn't that good of a boyfriend. Uh, yeah, but, I'm. Jared's okay. like, I'm not touching that one. Hey, no, no. I just. I don't know. He knows Braille. Shirt. Because he's blind. So, finger dicks. Anyway. Okay. So, so uh, it's, it's it's essentially Kingpin has gathered every every uh everybody out of Daredevil's little rogue gallery, and they're just going after him every way they can. Okay. It's been a couple so, of years since I've it, so. Okay. So I just. All right. So I just. <laughs> all right. We'll finish, 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 Nick. No, I'm done. I'm telling you to go. Okay. So I just finished uh, the first book of The Last Hunter by Cheney and Mixon, which is like, it has some inspiration I'm seeing of Battlestar Galactica. So basically the gist of this guy's dad was a grand admiral. And we interviewed him about it, which will be airing before this, so you'll have heard him talk about. It. But basically, the, his dad was a bit of a jerk, so it affected his career because everybody took out their hatred of dad on him. And so he doesn't make uh, Commodore, so they're going to force him to retire as a captain. And rather than that, they arrange him to get command of the battleships, but it's actually like they're all mothballed and basically museums. And so, but they have uh, nominally a, a navy presence on them, and so he's supposed to like make them able to be with like called up. To, to fight the aliens that they were designed for again, if necessary, as sort oh, of okay. like a, a sunset tour. And then the aliens come back. And so like they're rushing to get the uh, the ship ready. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it was the irreverence that you get a lot of from Cheney and the, the space um, authenticity that uh, Terry brings. So it's kind of a perfect melding of the minds. Um, it had the the a little bit less of the Terry Mixon normally puts in references to modern day pop culture, like to to ground readers now. Uh, there's always some history nerd who's like, oh, let me talk about this TV series that's two thousand years old, or whatever. Like he or didn't do his hammer that he made in one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was cool. It, it works because if you start having them talk about pop culture that hasn't happened yet, sometimes you can like it's a bridge too far for some people. It can be, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. I'm just gonna say this: when Terry Mixon put in the thing where the the quirky science grad student created basically like a art of, a version of Thor's hammer, I squealed like a girl, giddy with joy. Yeah, and it broke the sound barrier. That was pretty cool. He, we're talking about the yeah. Empire of Bones theories. It's also awesome. well, Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah he yeah. actually wrote the the script for Mjolnir on the hammer they were nervous but anyway so yeah i'm reading that i just finished i'm getting ready to write up my thoughts on it and do a, a book review on my website um i've started looking for more like paranormal because i don't know like i i saw somebody sent me something on wattpad it was very poorly edited but it was werewolves and i'm like this could be interesting i never really read any of that before so i'm looking for some of those some people have recommended uh larry korea i thought he did monsters i didn't know he did werewolves yeah, they're werewolves. He kills the the guy in like the beginning of um, Monster Hunter International. He kills his boss, who's a werewolf. He's trying to eat him. So I don't tend to read a lot of traditionally published stuff, just because it's so expensive compared to like the indie book prices. But uh, I'm gonna tackle figuring out how to do. Was it OneDrive or whatever it is where you can check eBooks out from the library? So I'm, I've determined I'm gonna figure that out so I can start checking out some of these these books but i'm looking for some uh for some paranormal stuff so if you guys got recommendations throw them in the uh in the comment section um and uh and we can we can maybe have some of those authors on too uh we're going to be having a panel that will probably air before this but where we haven't recorded it yet talking about fireside chat about like uh werewolves vampires and and, and the like um so that should be fun uh doc's gonna have a lot to say on that one i can already tell I don't know what you're saying. So, uh, but yeah, so if you've got any recommendations and then I am reading, um, cause I just realized I downloaded it, but never listened to it. I think it's like 14 or 15 in the empire of bone series by Terry Mixon. 
And then um, I've got new books in Jack Campbell's. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the name of that series, but it was by Jack Campbell. Um, but yeah, I've, 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 re I've realized I abandoned some series that new books came out that I bought and never wrestled to. So I'm starting back on some of those series because I own the book, so I'm not spending money I don't have. I know that feeling. But uh, so that's what I'm reading right now. Uh, and it's sometimes you might find the Lost Fleet series. Uh, oh, sometimes. Great. Are you going to ask us what we're reading on audiobooks? Yeah, well, I was just generically whatever we're reading. I will say that The Last Hunter was narrated by Jeffrey Kafer. And I am a little biased because I've hired him to, to narrate some of my stuff, but he did a really good job. Why are you laughing? They just announced a new Drizzt book from Ari Salvatore. Um, We've tried to get him on the show, but scheduling has been a little bit of an issue. I'm a little behind on the on Drizzt series, but I remember the first Drizzt. one. Drizzt? Drizzt? Oh, I that sounds like a sounds like a, a frog getting ready to jump out of a boiling pot when you say that. Yeah, he's a total um, So I'm not sure how long this episode is going to be because you know we're talking nerdy and books, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw the commercial up. We are we are proud of our sponsor I, this week. I forgot to tell you what um, audiobook I've been listening to. Well, we'll do that when we get back from the commercial. I... Mel Todd paid for the spot. We got to do it. Yeah, yeah I do love Mel Todd. In a world where magic is controlled by law and government, mages are both coddled and persecuted. Corey Monroe knows she isn't a mage, and her best friend is. Reality isn't always what you know. If you are looking for an urban fantasy with found family, an education-based magic system, and evolving storylines, try My Luck by Mel Todd, book one in the Twisted Luck series. Available exclusively on Amazon. I'm just going to Wake up! All right, so what do you listen to? I'm not asleep. I just finished reading the new one. All right, what are you reading? Spoil this, darling. I am reading um, book 12 of the Jane Yellow Rock series right now on audiobook. Because we all know that I'm a junkie and I can't just read one book at a time anymore. Okay. So I'm reading Shattered Bonds, and I have been binging the Yellow Rock series. It's twelve books, and there's six in her companion series that's in the same universe. So I'm for a while now. Yeah. Well, sorry. No, it's actually like seventeen, and I just finished. I've read like thirteen books, including the anthology collection. One and so one anthology. What have you um, for your audiobooks? Are you are you doing primarily from Audible? Because I know you like to diversify in, on the non Amazon. I've platform. done Audible, but also Barnes and Noble now has an audiobook program. Okay. Okay. So I've been doing that too because. How do you like that compared to Audible? I like it. It still works. It's a very similar to Audible. Um, Audible uh, in setup. They have a subscription. You can buy audiobooks, but you can also buy a subscription and get like X number of books a month. Yeah. And um, so I do like it. Um, Audible still has some really great contracts with, that they negotiated when they were really the only business in town where they're like Audible only. So there's definitely, I'm finding that I'm buying series in one app versus series in another app. Okay, so you're getting some series on one side and some series on another. Yeah. How does Barnes and Noble compare price price wise? The prices are pretty much the same. Can you do a credit system like you can in Audible, where you get a little bit cheaper sometimes if you buy the credits in bulk? Uh, I think so. I'd have to look more into it. It's fairly new, and I haven't spent a lot of time on it yet. Okay, so uh, this is where we throw it to you, dear reader. If you're reading or reading, if you're listening to audiobooks somewhere other than. Uh, Audible, which is the Amazon one, let us know what, where, how you like it, because, uh, you know, we're, we're always looking to broaden our knowledge of all things nerdy, so I've been, uh, in addition to doing the uh, the actual books, I've been listening to, binge listening to Isaac Arthur's, um, uh, trying to think what his acronym is, but he's got a sci-fi uh, science podcast that uh, that's really good, it's, uh, he's a physicist. And he's an army boy. He was in Iraq about the same time I was. Aww. I was. We were all there together, probably. Yeah, he That's was a... Uh, bonding he... experience. You can braid your non-existent hair together. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, he does. Uh, he was a he was a cannon cocker. So I mean, he, you know, he, he takes the good with the bad. Gun bunny. Gun bunny. It is. Uh, I'm trying to think what his channel is. It's going to draw a blank. The um, science and futurisms with Isaac Arthur. There we go. Science and futurisms. And I didn't remember. I googled people. Where is that podcast? Where can we find that podcast? It's on all audio platforms, and then it's also on uh, YouTube. And he does, uh, if you have science questions, he does a monthly, like, Q&A episode where he'll do a live stream and I'll answer your questions. And so it's 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 cool. It looks at the science and it takes some some realistic projections. Um, I want to know so. the science behind how a 12-year-old boy can tell me every minute detail about a video game he's playing, but will forget to put a trash bag in the trash can. I know this one! It's called Topic Fixation. It's a psychology, which is a science. It's a soft, squishy science, but it's still a science. Squishy it's called topic science. fixation and being a teenage male. You are one of one. My, my son my is definitely that way. But you'll, you'll uh, get a kick I forgot to do that, my dad would give me a, uh, a kinetic recalibration of my brain. Yes, mine too, mine too. <laughs> I like that. So uh, speaking of kinetic recalibration, so the, the thing I have been doing with the youngest uh, is a bonding time is we've started watching the Daredevil series. And a boy. So he's really liking it. So he was on like season four or something. And he's like, you got to watch it with me. So we started again. So he's watching it again with me, but then forward with on his own. So uh, I'm learning about Daredevil. Apparently he's really fast. Gross. Daredevil's awesome. Let's talk so, about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you watch the uh, the series that's on Netflix? Daredevil, yeah, huge fan. Um, so, they're going to bring Daredevil back with uh, Disney Plus, and hopefully, they don't screw it up because it was really good under Netflix. They will. But the um, a lot of people don't know this. They introduced a character named Echo in the Hawkeye series, who's getting her own show, who is a villain of daredevil so we're assume we're, we're speculating that echo season one is really daredevil season four because daredevil and king pan are supposed to be in it. okay so and we've, we've been spending family time um uh watching doctor who yep. oh I, I made her a whovian i had i can honestly say i had never watched it before Terminate. I, I had never, Dalek. never watched it before. I, 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 I don't know. People told me to watch it. I just never got to it. And so he finally got me to sit down. And now it's, it's a nightly thing. We're on. You should season do a, a live six, react. Seven. You should, seven. We're on you should do a seven. live react as you watch the shows. Like, who would be scared of a trash can with a plunger on it? The Daleks ain't scary. <laughs> Daleks don't know fear. But uh, so that's uh, I love the ouds. Yeah, my, in their little orbs. My favorite is the uh, the weeping angels. Those chicks are scary. Yeah, no angels. Yeah. Don't blink. I have the Doctor Who Lego set. Do you really? Which right. Doctor is it? What? Which Doctor? Which Doctor? Which Doctor? No, it's they only did one Lego Who set. Yeah, but which doctor did they do? I don't doctor. remember. Was he wearing a bow tie? Okay. All right, people, if you know the right answer, you can leave that in the comment section too, because Doc is I failing really us. Terminate you. So um, in addition to that, one of the things I, I make them do is sit through some of like the 90s sci-fi. So we're starting on episode one. We're actually well, we're on episode 15 now, but we started with episode one of Stargate after we watched the movie. And we're working our way through all 10 oh, seasons yeah. of that. And then Atlantis and then SGU. They will get addicted. They will learn. They have, They are not, they can't consent otherwise. I mean, they could say no, but then I'm going to ignore it because we're going to call it family bonding time and they're going to do it anyway. Dead. Oh, you made a decision. Yeah, I, I recognize you made a decision, but since it's a stupid ass decision, I chose to ignore it. <laughs> See, okay. my son loves it. It's the chin. It's the chin. Lieutenant Ford is his favorite out of Atlantis. We actually interviewed Lieutenant Ford. The actor's name is Rainbow Sun Franks. It has been aired as one of our re-released archive episodes as well. 
<laughs> and, and part of the reason he's the real reason he wants his sons to watch Atlantis is so that eventually they can think he's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, part of the reason he's so tough is because his name was Rainbow growing up. It's like naming your son Sue. It makes you tough. Name, and the cool thing about Rainbow Son Franks is his dad was actually the voice of Darth Vader on the uh, Star Wars Christmas cartoon that was so maligned. The one that was on uh, Disney you mean Plus. That people have used as fundraisers. Seriously, yes. there was a Dragon Con year where they they did a fundraiser on the classic film track, I think, and it was you had to pay to get out. <laughs> They've yeah, never raised as Star much money. Star Wars Christmas special, even though it's the first appearance of Boba Fett. It's horrible. How did you I feel? Of, you, you didn't like it at all. I take. I it. thought Boba Fett was in the original three. He, his second appearance was in Empire. But so the was in uh, the Star Wars holiday special. So the holiday so, special happened between the movies. So one yeah, of the things, yeah, it happened right that that December of seventy seven. Okay, so one but of the things we've talked about. It, it aired once and never aired again. Carrie Fisher was coked out of her mind. There's a you, reason for it. Oh, it was that. But it was horrible. It was so bad. That's what she had to do to get through the plot. <laughs> So one of the things we talked about doing was some fireside chats where we get like in-depth nerdiness on certain genres. So like a one on Lord of the Rings, maybe one on uh, Star Wars, Sarf Track, Doctor Who. Like Did we're you gonna say get some Sarf of those. Track or Star Trek. I said Star Trek. I, did Trek. Not sound I was like trying not to say Barf Track because I'm not a fan. I will hurt you. I know. That's why I corrected myself. I didn't want to make you look bad. I think bad. you would appreciate the series better just for like one of the shows where it has the Makos. Which one's that? Uh, I think it was Enterprise. Enterprise. Okay. Enterprise has the Makos. I watched the uh, Enterprise. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually find it that bad. That's the one with Scott uh, Bakula or whatever. Bacula, yeah. Yeah, that one wasn't that bad. Deep Space Nine. But that's not a star. That's like a sci-fi show. It's like a space opera with no no it's spaceships. It's all on the space station. I don't care. So did you like Babylon? Did you like Babylon Five as well? Yes, I did like Babylon Five as well. <laughs> so, so Stabby, you gonna weigh in? Did you like Babylon Five and Deep Space Nine? <laughs> Never watched them. Lady of Taste. I got a lot of work. I did out. like Star Trek Voyager too. Okay, so I was the middle child growing up. So anything that I got to do, I got to do because it was hand-me-downs. So all of my comic books, all of my books, everything was something from my brothers. Um, and I never, ever, ever got to choose what was watched on the TV. When I finally did get a TV in my room, I was not permitted to use the DVR because everybody else had their stuff scheduled. But so if I wasn't home to watch anything, then I didn't get to see it. Dude, your parents were horrible. Mine at least made us take turns. Oh, no. And I, I was the only girl, and I was the no, cleaner no. of the bathroom. My parents got to make – we all took turns. We can negotiate mm -hmm. with, like, your turn came – like, but it's not my turn, but it's my show. We had to negotiate, and if we couldn't figure out how to do it, everything got confiscated. Sounds about right. There's a reason I can negotiate. So, speaking of negotiation, uh, not all of the books that we I liked negotiate. had a follow-up episode because, you know, sometimes they didn't sell enough for them to write book two or episode two or whatever. So what uh, what are you waiting for? What are you excited to, uh, to release that you want to read or watch, Doc? Wait, I didn't understand. Are you so saying like I just I liked the last hunter enough. I'm waiting for I think on the twentieth is when book two releases in audio, so I'm waiting for that. Oh, so you're what? not talking about series that never got completed? No, I'm talking just in general. What are you waiting for to come out that you want to you would like to read? I'm making it broadly uh, broad question. I'm looking forward to Bryce's uh, Bryce O'Connor. And Luke Kamekalo's, um next book in the, the follow-up Iron Prince. Okay. 
Um, but if you're talking completed series, I'm still waiting wherever Lysane Norman is for the next one in that series that she wrote. Oh, what series is this? Good. What series? I can't remember the name of the type series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I would look it up for her like I normally do. But uh, that, that's you a ringing endorsement. Do it. I'm going, turning Point is the first one. Okay. So what about you, uh, Nick or Stabby? Or you, is there anything you're waiting to come out that you're excited about? I'm waiting for Young Ripa's Isom number one comes out next month. Nice, nice. Uh, what about you, Stabby? Within a week, he raised almost two hundred million dollars for that project. Oh, good. Is that that's more than? Uh, is that well, where does that compare on the Sanderson scale? I have no Everything's idea. below Sanderson. I don't know how much he got on his Kickstarter. They got so much money; it was all over the move. Uh, it wasn't $1.8 million, I'm sure. No, it was higher than that. Was it really? It's like the largest Kickstarter in series in ever. There's a thing, though. It's not, this isn't through Kickstarter. He just put up a website for pre-sales and... Dominated. <laughs> so, so if we're looking... All that. So if we're looking for things that probably will never happen, but I would like to come out, they uh, they cut Stargate Universe way too early. Because like all good shows that go to Fox, they die. Uh, so they were like, well, we're going to give you the conclusion in a graphic novel. So they give us the graphic novel, issue one, and they're good. They, they close some of the loops, and then they open more, and then they don't finish that either. $41 so we... million and change, Nick. And that was a comic book? No, no, oh, this is his book. books. Oh, no, it was his Kickstarter. It was actually was a couple books. It's actually titled A Year of Sanderson. It's like 12. Well, you know, for a comic book to raise almost two million dollars in a week, that's a big deal. For no, I think it's great. I think we should have more of those because comic books are mean their own love. The most I ever raised on a book was like 5,500. So that's, that's chunk change in the bucket compared to this guy. Like, it's it's awesome. It's it's set the bar really freaking high. But you're gonna get it. You're gonna like totally blow it out of the water with your next comic, I'm sure. No, because I I'm doing it backwards. I did the comic first, and now I'm gonna try and get like like a YouTube following. But that's this guy had a YouTube following for a while, and then so he already had kind of like a a plug and play audience. TikTok, TikTok, uh, TikTok ain't making me no money either. That's the, not, your fans only ain't making you any money either. It's because he doesn't charge for his seat. Thanks. I, thanks for bringing up all the social media, which I make no money and I'm a complete loser. <laughs> so you just got to get, you got to hire loser. the lady behind you. I make no you. money. So just hire the lady behind you to be your uh, your social media maven and she can like make you famous. She works for free, so that's cool. You got to no, at least take her out. No. Dude, I got no money to pay you. So you just like pay real. her. Service is rendered yeah. and we'll move on. Yeah. Our service is rendered by service. <laughs> so, so Stabby, we, uh, we interrupted you because we do that a lot to each other. Uh, is there any book or, or series that you're waiting for? Yeah, I'm waiting for the storyline to Regent by Nick Garber. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't invite you on the show. I don't invite you on the show. How are you going to draw me as a cartoon character, as a superhero, and then I don't have no backstory? I don't have I don't have a comic book. I just have a picture. I'm going to give you the worst backstory. What would be <laughs> the worst? Back, let's 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 storyboard this right now. What is the yeah, worst what's backstory? The worst backstory. I don't know. He already has it as a socialite that randomly that doesn't know. Yeah. Um, you, you just by happenstance in a drunken <laughs> stupor run into the superhero that's dying, and he. Gives you an amulet with part of his powers, not even all of his powers. A part of his powers. Wait, wait, this so sounds sorry. disturbingly like Green Lantern and Ryan Reynolds. No, but it'll be hey. better acted, I'm sure. It's so yeah, I've never heard the player. <laughs> sorry, my forehead's too small. Ouch! And this, so the dog are on all, all night. No, my dog will eat the bee because she's smarter than that. My dog stepped on a bee. I forgot to make the tea. All right, all right. So, uh, yeah. what are you? As pop culture references go, it's that's cool. why they had me on the show because hey, I'm making you on a pulse on that stuff. I'm going to pour myself a mega pint. A mega pint. There you go. See, she's on it. A mega. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's just a large glass of wine. It's necessary. 
A mega pint. A mega pint. What is a mega pint? I'm out of the loop. <laughs> well, it's five o'clock somewhere. It was all part of the, the, the trial. The, it was like an Indian morning time, time zone. Kind of wine, and Johnny starts laughing. He's like, I poured myself a large glass of wine. A mega I pint. I deemed it necessary. I deemed it necessary. Okay. So the Amber Heard. Is it uh, any hour, happy hour? Okay. It was comedy. You should have watched it. Yeah, it oh, dude, it. I loved when they were like, he's like, I gave Marilyn Manson a pill. He needed to stop talking so much. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is the part where we kick it back to you, dear listener. So what are you reading? What are you excited for to come out? What are you what watching? What should I read next? What should I read next? I'm cool what with that. I have like, pretty pictures for Nick. Pretty course, pictures for Nick. Uh, any we'll recommendations for 12 step programs for Doc? Uh, you know, whatever we got to do. Sober that girl up. Uh, I understand the day after Dragon Con is when you sober up for the year and then we restart <laughs> for next year. No, it's the Wednesday after Dragon Con is when she starts sobering up. Oh, but wait, you've got the after, after, after party for Dragon Con first, right? Is that how this works? No. We have so, the dead dog party Monday night, then there's the leftovers party afterwards, and then the next day I spend sleeping. So speaking of, so as usual, because Doc is our co-host, we will do a interview as many as we can grab that will come on the show in a timely manner that are finalists for the Dragon Con. Um, and then we will do... Um, once no, we don't get call the, it the Dragon Con. Call it what it is, because the Dragon Con is the con. The Dragon Award. For the Dragon Award. I'll, okay. Uh, we'll try to do that before the final vote once they do the nominees. By the way, we do have comics. So speaking of, uh, it is possible you could do your thing and nominate still. It is still open. So if you want to get people on the first, on the ballot, throw your uh, throw your hat in the ring, put your books out there, people. And uh, and go from there, and maybe you'll you'll even get to see some cosplay of those. Characters. Or come find me at Dragon Con. That totally wouldn't be creepy at all. Do it. It wouldn't be creepy, not compared to other this things. All right. And on that note, do you guys got anything else, or do you want to call this an early episode? Because it was mostly just episode, you were just checking on what everyone was reading, and we'll try to do more of these. But I think. In the future, we, we need another guest or two to make it so it's uh, it's a it's an episode. <laughs> it's the summer. It's been really busy. We had a lot of oh, cancellations. Wait, wait. Nick, what con summer. are you going to next? Uh, I'm not going to any conventions, but so San you're going to stay home and, and make me a comic book, book, right? Huh? You're going to stay home and make me a comic book, then, right? Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Good boy. I might start Nick's art house reviews tomorrow. So nice. So there, now, uh, get out. no, I don't, I don't. It's okay. So uh, as we bring this to a close, though, we're going to say, uh, so Doc, you're not, are you still writing that short story you started a couple years ago? Back in 2019 where you killed a certain person? Did you ever go back to it? I still have it saved. But right now I'm not doing a lot of writing since my uh, primary computer died and I haven't gotten the next one in yet. Moment of silence. Okay. I know. I work. love Davis. He was such a good So, character. So what are you working on now, Nick? Uh, and Just remind everybody. Uh, right now we're in pre-production for Solarum Prime Issue 2 and Court of Regan Sparrow Number 1. Are Wait. you open for some... Go ahead. Go ahead, no, Doc. keep going. I'll tell you after. Um, are you uh, open for submissions? We've had a couple people ask about if you took submissions for um, like outlines or whatever. Uh, no, not right now. Um, we're we're really focusing on our own characters once we can kind of get going back to that 2018 pace for those that have been following after you for a while then we'll start opening up for submissions but it, it's going to be a while and uh any eta on the website we've had people ask because they you know they try to support it's you but yeah um i'm in contact with the developer right now because i the last one i did myself and i know it could be better and i don't have the skills so when you don't have skills hire someone that does okay so I'm, also, I'm open for commissions. So if you want some original Nick Arbor art, hit me up. So when will you do us a favor when that art that website goes back up, will you throw it up on the uh, the Facebook? Oh, that's, so that's the first place I'm gonna post it. 
and then we'll fix it to all the social media. So what's up for us? I, w I have started looking into, we're going to set up a link tree and do Rumble and BitChute. I'm trying to find some programs that will automatically, there are other YouTube type platforms. I'm trying to find some uh, programs that will automatically, we load on one and it shoots to the other two kind of thing um, to make our job easier because, you know, we're not making a lot of money on this. Um, and, uh, and so you know, right now we break even on expenses and that's about it. Uh, I have wrote out a list of everything I'd written because I was curious after I had my third uh, easy short story published with uh, Blaster Bolts. And I realized I had 10 open projects. So that's my goal is to start finishing those. Uh, I have four novels sitting here waiting for some final edits that uh, if the publisher doesn't use soon, I'm thinking I might I might publish myself and just put them in a non-proprietary universe. So it looks like 2023 might be my year. Because <laughs> if I start throwing all those novels up, uh, it'll be real quick and dirty. But, you know, I just I didn't realize how much I had outstanding. And so I am uh, I wrote the final battle for the uh, military portal fantasy I'm writing with James Ward. And we realized a lot of our air, uh, Blackhawk stuff because we had some helicopter scenes. We apparently knew nothing. And so we were doing some major rewrites because the subject matter expert looked at it and be like, yeah, you're an idiot. Fix this. <laughs> well, you are a friend. But this is the beauty of, did you know they had wheels and not skids? Who knew? Uh, this is what happens when, you know, you know a lot about stuff because you're a history nerd, but you don't necessarily know a lot about stuff that's modern. <laughs> Light infantry didn't get a lot of support. We walked. We had boots. You want to talk about boots? I'm done. But that doesn't make compelling stories. So anyway, as we bring this. I'm uh, also working on running page to stage still. Oh, that's right. And we did that episode. It should be live. So go check it out. It was good fun. Yes, it is a literary and print media based costume contest. So last, we're going to start listing where you can find us. Nick, since your website's currently down, uh, do you have a Facebook presence where people can come get you? I do. I have a Facebook presence with uh, my artwork and for the company. Um, you can find me on Facebook. This is the long part of the segment. Uh, Nick Garber Art on Facebook and Instagram and Apogee Comics on Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter for both of those. So okay. Um, are you going to do it, Nick? <laughs> uh, Doc gets way too excited about this. Uh, so, Doc, where can they find Page to Stage and your Dragon Con stuff? So, if you go to um, I think it's the at symbol and then DC page two stage on, but we are on Twitter as fantasy lit. We are on DC fantasy lit. We have a Instagram account and, um, which is fantasy page to stage. And of course we have the fantasy lit page, which right now, normally we don't plug these things except for I'm madly working on dragon con stuff. So somebody has to humor me because that's all that's left in my brain. Okay, and you can find my stuff at uh, my Nick website. Has only fans. Nick has OnlyFans. You can find my stuff at my website at jrhanley.com. On all the social medias, if I'm there, it's at jrhanley uh, because I'm really easy that way. And uh, you can follow us for the show on our Twitter at twitter.com backslash sf underscore fantasy underscore show. Uh, SF underscore fantasy underscore show. You can email the show at blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. We have a Facebook presence where all the shenanigans happen at facebook.com backslash groups backslash blasters and blades podcast. Again, backslash groups backslash blasters and blades podcast. You can follow us on our website at anchor.fm backslash blasters tack and tack blades. Again, anchor.fm backslash blasters dash and dash blades where you can support the show for as little as 99 cents a month you can help keep the light on or you can support the show over at buymeacoffee.com backslash author jr handley again buymeacoffee.com backslash author jr handley be sure to put in the comment section that it is for the podcast and i promise i will keep my co-host nick garber and doc seska duly intoxicated they will drink until their mega pints are empty never empty are you going to read us, bring us home, Doc, or are you just going to drink? She's probably yes. gonna. Uh, right. Thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. For everybody present for once, Nick Garber, Stabby, my favorite, and J.R. Hanley, this was the Blasters and Blaze podcast. 
We'll be back next week, same time, same place, same chaos and mischief. So we never repeat it much. So, I'm uh, sure she took my job. what? I'm pretty sure she just took my job. Yeah, uh, it's okay. So, be sure to join us and have a wonderful time. Thank you for coming.